So first of all, welcome everybody to your training on becoming an anchor expert. We're really happy to have you with us. This is part one of two. We're really excited to teach you everything you're going to need to know to get started. Uh, we have Rebecca from the customer success team. I am Robin. It's great to meet you all. Definitely happy to have everyone here with us. So just to explain briefly what's going to be happening. So today we have part one. And the idea behind today is to make sure that you know every, everything that goes into our proposal side of things, right? We want to know uh, that you can feel comfortable setting up a proposal, getting it out to your clients. We want to show you about all the different options you have for billing. You have services and you have packages that you can offer. We'll deep dive into that. And we'll show you also that the experience is mobile friendly from your client side. They're able to approve the agreement from the client side. We're going to show you all of this and make sure you feel comfortable. And then in part two, we're going to show you why Anchor is as incredible as it is, all of the automation that it does. So you'll understand all of the invoicing, the billing, the payments, how it all works, how you can sync everything to QBO, and basically how everything, everything happens automatically, how everything happens within Anchor. So you can create amendments, make changes, add one-time charges. All of this stuff exists. We're going to touch that on part two. In the meantime... Again, we just want to make sure that, that for today, we're going to get your account set up. That's going to be a very important aspect. And then all of the different opportunities you have for maximizing your revenue when you're setting up your proposals and then how to do that. I'm going to pull up my, my Anchor account. Let me get that one open. Perfect. And I'm going to share my screen there. So we're going to dive right in. So I understand that some of you have been with us for a while, Anchor. Some of you are newer and you're less familiar. I'm going to cover a bit of everything. Maybe something's familiar to you, maybe not. But if it's a little repetitive, it could be that maybe you'll learn something new. So bear with me if something's a little bit familiar. The first thing I'd like you all to note is that when you come to Anchor, you come to the dashboard page. Our dashboard pages is, is something we're going to touch a bit more on in the second session. But what's important for you here is your setup. So if you're new to Anchor, we have this setup right here at the top. If you're good, if it's closed, if it's done, you can keep it closed. But I'm going to open it here to show you. There are a few things you need to get set up before you really get started. So very important is to set up your brand. You want to make sure your logo and your colors are in. So when your clients get emails from Anchor, they see your logo, things look familiar, they recognize your name. So get yourself set up there. Um, services we're going to actually do together, but you want to make sure your services are set up because that's going to be part of creating a proposal. Um, we're going to do a test agreement together today, but certainly if you haven't done one, I'd recommend doing a test agreement to yourself, getting a feel for what it looks like, um, how it all operates. But very important, you want to connect your bank account and verify your business identity. These two right here, you can't get paid without them. And our goal is to get you paid. So please make sure when you first come into Anchor that you have these steps set up, especially these two. And then once it's done and you're good to go, you can just close that up and not worry about it. Again, what we have here, this is going to be helpful for you along the way. It's going to give you guidance where you, where you need to take action and fill you in on where everything stands. But we're going to explain this more in depth in session two. So we'll come back to this. So what I really want to focus on today is, like I said, is getting proposals set up and sent out. So something that you need to know, if we click on this proposals drop down here, you'll see there are a few things happening. We're going to cover everything here today. Um, but I just want to explain that a proposal is actually, it's an agreement. Um, there are three stages to it. So right when we start working on a proposal, the second you type anything, you do anything in that proposal, it becomes a draft. And you can see we have a folder for drafts. You don't have to do anything. We auto save for you. So every change you make, it saves. You don't have to save it. You don't have to worry about it. And it will be in your drafts folder. If you never delete it or you never send it, it will remain in your drafts folder. Once you, send an, once you send your proposal out, it moves from your drafts to your sent proposals folder. It's officially a proposal because it's been sent to your client. And once your client approves it, it becomes an agreement. Okay, so three stages of the same thing. We're going to be looking at your, we're going to be working in drafts. We're creating drafts that will become sent proposals. That's going to be the focus today. But one step before that is your services. 
you can't send out a proposal until you've built out your service library. So that's actually where we're going to start right here. We're going to go to the services on the left side menu. And I'll mention this left side menu here is where basically all of the action takes place. Everything you're going to need to do and see is here on the left side menu. So we're going here to the services tab. This is my demo account. There's a lot of action. We have 168 services. You don't need to have that many. Just make sure that everything that you want to offer your clients exists here in the services page. Now, these are your service templates, which means whatever you create here should be your standard. And that's what you're going to pull from when you're creating a proposal. You're going to choose which services to add to your client's proposals, and it's going to be pulled from this page. When we get to the proposals, you'll see that you can edit everything in the proposal itself. So if maybe your standard offer is going to be different for a client, you have a specific price for them, you have maybe some change details, you can change that on the proposal level. But what you have here should just be whatever you offer as a standard. Okay, so you can see here we have all of these different services. We're going to look at what all of this means, the rate, the bill of occurrence and the trigger, but all these different options, all these different variations you can have in services. There is no limit to how many services you can create. And I'll show you what it looks like right now when you create a new service. So we'll click up here to the new service button and I'll take you through what everything means. The first, on the left side, we have a service name and a service description. Service name should be something that's gonna be, of course, clear to you and to your client. Just note, each service name needs to be unique. You cannot have the same service name twice, okay? So just keep that in mind. Service description, the more you put in the description, the more your client will understand, essentially. So it's really up to you how much you want to include, but when your client sees the proposal and then has the agreement, whatever you put in to describe this service will be seen by your client and will remain there in the agreement. So there's, you can, for clarity's sake, to understand what elements go into this service. Um, you can add that all here under the description. Pretty basic so far. Here on the right is where all the action happens. There are lots of different opportunities here to set up different types of services. So the first thing you'll note is we have a billing occurrence, okay? It here, for example, is one time. If I click on the menu, there are all of these different options that are recurring. We're gonna stick right now for one time. If you create a one-time service, this means that you can bill it once and it will disappear off of the agreement. We have a section that shows completed and stopped services and it won't feature in the base of the agreement anymore. It'll be done. Now, one-time services can be automatic on agreement approval, which means, let's say it's a cleanup service, it's a one-time charge right away that you don't plan on doing again. You can set it up so that when your client accepts the agreement, it's charged immediately and it's done and they won't see it again. So if that's the case, you set up a one time, let's say there's a fixed price of $100 for service. Let's go service Y. Okay. Service Y is going to be charged one time when your client approves. It's $100. If you want to offer a discount, you have the option by either percentage or dollar sign. I'll leave it blank for now. And that's it. And that's the service. So if you want to add that to a new proposal, like I mentioned, your client's going to approve the agreement. This is going to charge on the agreement date and it's done. You also have the option to make it manual, which means it's going to be charged one time, but maybe you want to only charge it when you finish a certain project. So that means when this is something we'll cover on the second session, but you have the option to charge it whenever you want. You'll, you can decide when to bill it. You'll be able to do it here in the system. So you can say, no, this is going to be manual. I'll decide when the service is complete and then we'll do it that way. So you have, like I mentioned, several options. And then, of course, there's this pricing. So let's take a look at a monthly service. Now we have a service that's going to occur on a monthly basis. We have different pricing options, right? So let's start here. We have a fixed price. Let's keep it there for a second. $100, no discount, and let's make it automatic. What we've just set up is basically a set it and forget it. You're telling this system, you're telling Anchor, and you're telling your client, listen, on a monthly basis, you're going to be charged $100 and it's automatic. You don't have to do anything, basically, past this point. You can come in and say, I want this to be charged monthly. I don't want to think about it. Make it automatic and you're done. And that's it. You add this into the agreement. You don't have to do anything. Every month, $100 is going to be taken from your client's account. 
It's that simple. But now we have a few other options here. Okay, so that's for a fixed price. But what if you charge per hour? You select per hour. You put in your rate per hour. Let's say you charge $50 an hour. No discount. We have this pre-approved hours option, which means you and your client have decided you're not going to charge more than five hours a month. So five hours a month, you can come in anything five and below. No problem. You charge your client. The pay payment goes out automatically. If you worked for a month, for example, seven hours, you had some extra work you needed to do. You can still come in and say, hey, I worked seven hours this month, but it's now officially out of the scope of the agreement. Your client will need to approve it. OK, so just keep that in mind. Also note that you really should put something into the pre-approved hours because if you leave it blank, if it's at a zero, anytime you charge anything, your client will need to approve it. So make sure you put in a number here that's certainly not zero, right, that has a real number, but not a thousand where your client might be scared to say, wait, my, I might be charged a thousand hours a month. Uh-uh. Put in a number that's going to be safe, that'll cover you, that won't require approval, but also won't scare off your client. OK, make sure to put in your pre-approved hours numbers. And of course, because you have to decide how many hours each month you're putting in, the billing trigger becomes manual. We can't do this automatically. You'll come and tell the system, I worked four hours this month, and then one button, you click bill, and you're done. OK, similarly, we have a price per unit. This time, if it's not per hour, if you charge per project, if you charge per employee, you charge per file, whatever it may be, you can come in and say, I charge $250 for each project that I do. This month, let's say no discount this month, I won't charge more than three projects, three projects a month, and you set it up this way and you're good to go. Okay, another option you have is a price range. In a case like this, if you know you have some sort of pricing, you, you don't know exactly how much it's going to be, but you know that the service you provide is going to come out somewhere between, uh, let's say, $1,000 and $1,500 this month, okay? And any month, you don't know how much it's going to be. You don't know how much work you'll have to do, but you know that this is going to be that safe range. You can put it in like this, and anytime you charge $1,500 or below, it works the same way. You're good to go. You click that bill number. We will charge it. No problem. If you bill above $1,500, you can. Just know your client will have to approve it. So all of these are manual. And the only automatic one here is a fixed price. OK, so that's it. Those are your options here. It's pretty direct, pretty simple. You just click Save. It's a new service. And you're done. OK, I'll remove this here. I'm going to cancel the service, but you can have them here. Once you have a service, you can edit it. You can come in. You get the same thing here. Make any changes you want. You can also duplicate it. So if you have this, but maybe you have you set it up as monthly, you also offer it as quarterly. You put in all this information into the description. You just need to make a few changes to pricing. You can duplicate it, do what you need, and you can always, of course, remove it. OK, so once you have your services set up, you can comfortably move over to your proposals. OK, on the dashboard page, on the proposals page, on the agreements page, you'll always find this create proposal option here. Nice and simple. We're going to we're going to help you get that done. Oh, I forgot to mention something. And I, I see here. Excuse me. I want to mention we also have an import services button. We can help you out if you have a bunch of services you want to upload. You have them on another system. Maybe you're using QBO. You're moving over from another another platform. You can just download them. You can, we can upload them for you. You can upload them yourself. Click on the import services. We can bring it all in for you, make it nice and simple. And similarly, we can actually do this if you have um, engagements that you want to bring over to Anchor. You click on this import. If you have 30 or more that you'd like to upload onto Anchor, we would like to help. We want to make this nice and easy for you. Instead of you manually creating each one, in, in just a matter, of, we, depending how many you have, it could be just a few days, we'll do the bulk of the work for you. Uh, we'll ask you to download some information, pass it along to us, and we'll basically do the work for you so that you will have all of your drafts sitting and waiting to go and you just send them out to your clients. Like I said, if you have a lot you'd like to bring over to us, just click that import button. There's a form for you to fill out. We will reach out to you and do the most of the work for you. OK, we want to make this easy for you. Now. Let's take a look at what, what creating a proposal means. So I'm going to click this button. And these are all of the details that go into filling out a proposal. 
First things first, you can name your proposal. You put in a title over here, name it whatever you'd monthly bookkeeping. That's fine. Does not have to be original, just something that helps you keep order. The next thing to note is you add a contact. Now, we have a contact page and similar to services, you can upload all your contacts at, one, at once, make it nice and easy. You can also add them individually. So if you've uploaded a list of your contacts, you can come here, go do a search, find whichever contact you're looking for, and that information gets added right over here, okay? If not, you have the option to add a new contact right from here, right? You just click new contact, we are, you're required to put in a first, last name, company name, and email address. Those fields must be filled out. I'll mention that if you're working with an individual and not a company, just put their first and last name in as the company name. There's a phone number that's optional. The value of adding a phone number is that we send out reminder emails to your clients to let them know that uh, they have an approval, they have a proposal waiting for their approval. We'll also send out two texts if you put in a phone number. And the last thing to note, and now I'm going to, I'm going to, Focus more on this in the second session, but um, we have a really nice integration with QuickBooks Online um, where you'll have to uh, do a sync. We'll map up all your services and your contacts. Um, we'll automatically sync everything for you, basically saving you all this time. Um, everything will, will happen on QBO that you've done on Anchor. You don't have to do all of that work. Everything will be reconciled. Again, we'll focus on that in the second session. Um, but if you have a, a new contact that you don't yet have on QuickBooks, you, you can either push them as a new client or if they already exist, you can just go and find their name and say, oh, yeah, there's Ted Lasso. That's the client I'm working on here. Right, We're adding Ted Lasso from the Lasso company. And then you could just map it right here and you're good to go. Let me just add a phone. Let's say this is Ted at TedLasso.com. And now I've created my contact. Okay. Next up, we have the agreement effective date. So you can either say, right when my client approves the agreement, it goes into effect. It's immediate, on acceptance. But you can also choose a specific date. So if, for example, you say it's March 11th, but you agree to start work on the 1st of March, date it backwards and say, yep, this is effective actually from March 1st, or I agreed I'm not doing any work on this account until April 1st. This only goes into effect April 1st. You can't take any action here. You cannot bill your clients until April 1st, and that's when everything will start rolling. Okay, so you can decide what works for you. And finally, we have an introductory message. This is, this is the email that goes out to your clients. There's one for new clients. There's one for existing clients that you're bringing over to Anchor. And you can have a brand, a total custom message. You have the opportunity to edit that message if you want, play around with it, or you could just leave it as is. So you can play with that if you want to and customize it to your own wording. Now. We talked about all of the services before. This is why. This is your services section where you can select which services from your services template to use over here. You click the select services button. You will get a list of all of your services and you can add as many as you'd like into the agreement. Okay, all a big mix. So let's say for, let's, I'm gonna pick a few things here, okay? I'm gonna choose a monthly manual. We have a one-time automatic. Let's go with a monthly automatic. No, I'm looking at the billing occurrence and the billing trigger. Okay, that's what I'm trying to show you different ones that might that you can add into an agreement, into a proposal here. Let's choose one more, a one-time manual. Okay, and I'm going to add those services. So now you see them all here. Note that each service has its own little box and each box has three icons. So here are our three dots. Now, I, we had three dots before on the services page. These three dots are all over the site. They allow you to take action. Just know they indicate some sort of activity that you can take. In this case, if you click on the three dots, you have the option to move things up or down. This basically allows you to rearrange the order of your services. So if you want the accounting assessment to appear first, you just move it up and it'll appear first. So just if you want to reorder things, go ahead and do that. The second we have is a little garbage. You accidentally added something, get rid of it, no problem. The third is something I mentioned before. So let's say you generally charge $500 for your accounting assessment, but for this client, you've actually offered them a discount. You want that reflected here. So either you can say, I only charge you $400 and leave it at that. Or if you want, you can have it reflected to show that you offer them that discount. So the discount could be 
you could say it's a 20% or you know what? I'm going to show you. I'm actually giving you a $100 discount and that's the price change. And now you could see they're, they're going to see that they're not paying 500, they're paying 400. So any edits you need to make, and I'll show you that again, service name, the description, any of the details here, any of it could be changed for whatever you need for any particular client. So keep that in mind. Your service templates should be general, but you always have the opportunity to make changes for any individual client you're working with, okay? So that's gonna be important. And you can see here all of the details that are relevant to this account, it's here, okay? Now, the next thing to note, this client is gonna be billed monthly automatically. Anytime you have a recurring service that's set to automatic, you're gonna have a few options over here. So the first, you wanna set up when you bill. Do you bill upfront or at the end of the billing cycle? I'm gonna choose upfront and I like to bill on the first of the month, but you have the choice to decide what day you're getting paid. Then we have advanced settings and pay attention to these. This is gonna be, this is something that's gonna be really cool and unique to Anchor. First of all, keep in mind, we have the agreement set on acceptance. If we chose a date in the future, things would look a little bit different over here. Okay, you see this is grayed out, the do not start automatic billing. They, they're, we're, it's going immediately, there's nothing, if this was in the future, if this wasn't in the future, you have all of these different options to play around with. So keep in mind that what you're choosing for the effective date is gonna change some of the options you have here. But what you're seeing here is charge this service on proposal acceptance. You're letting them know, I wanna charge right away. When they approve the agreement, it's gonna charge right away. Now, I'm billing up front. That means today is the 11th. If I sent out this proposal today and my clients sign tomorrow, this means that they're going to pay for the entire month of March. They're, we're billing them up front. So I'm like, I'm saying this is great. Go for it. I want to charge them for the month of March. But if you don't want to, you have the option to say, do not start automatic billing. And that actually means, and you see the little question mark? We give you an explanation. That means this isn't going to start until I tell it to. It's going to be a paused service. You can see it says paused over here. The service is paused until I come into the system and tell them I'm ready to start charging it. And I'll, again, that's going to be a, a session two thing to look at. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. But this means I'm not ready to start charging this service just yet. So I'm going to make sure that it does not bill until I say so. Okay. Now, what's really cool is, let's say, for example, you've been working with this client for a little while. Um, now, accounting assessment is not something you've done with them before. You do their trust tax return. Uh, you do this. You do their, all of these services you've done in the past. This one, however, you haven't agreed to in the past, but you think that this client might benefit from this service. You can mark this service as optional, and you can either set it as included or not included. There's a toggle your client will see. They're going to see these three services are what I'm getting as part of my package. And in a separate section, it's going to show, and I'll show it to you momentarily. In a separate section, it's going to show that I have the option to take this service, whether I want it or not. So you can decide whether the service is set to on or off on the toggle, and that's not included or included. That's going to be up to you. Something else you can do is bill something a limited number of times. So if, for example, you know that you only want to charge this accounting assessment for six months. You don't need it past that point. You and your client agree this is only something they need for half a year. You can come in here and say, bill it a limited number of times. You can see right here, the bubble was added, can be billed six times. After six times that this service is built, it will disappear. It'll be done. It'll be complete. And you don't have to come in and worry about it or stop it. It's done. So these are all of these different options you have here to note. And like I said, each of these has some options. The ones that are recurring and automatic have the most. And make sure you just pay attention to the, you know, what day you're billing and when you start it. Okay. Now, there are more sections to look at, but there's actually more to look at in the services. We have, and this is going to be something that's going to be super helpful for you if you're working with new clients or even bringing new accounts over from other platforms, you can also offer them packages. Okay. So, we like to give you different ways to maximize your revenue. Optional service is one of them and create packages is another. Before we do the create packages, I just want to give you a click, a quick preview of what this looks like from your client's perspective. So I'm going to click this view cl client preview button down here. And you'll see that your client's going to have an introduction over here. This is the email that I mentioned. 
They'll review the agreement. Now, this is what it looks like for them. They're going to see, okay, these are the services that I'm getting. And they can click on this arrow over here and they'll get all the details connected to that service. If you put in the more, like I said, the more information you put in about it, the more they'll be able to see. But all of that is filled in over here. And here you go. Additional services to choose from. Here's where they can decide accounting assessment. What's accounting assessment? I see I'm getting a discount on it. Here are the details. Here's the information. And if they decide this is something they want to include, they put the toggle on. And now it's going to be a part of what they're accepting. It's going to be a part of their proposal, a part of the agreement. There's a billing schedule that's going to highlight when they're going to be charged, what they're going to be charged. So I'm going to stop here for, the, for this. We're going to look at the short lead, but I want you to see that this is what it looks like when you offer services. If you create a package, that allows your client to decide what they're going to take. So you have option one, option two, you can add up to three. Clicking the three dots allows you to either remove or rename. So you can call these gold, silver, bronze, basic, advanced, and ultimate, right? So let's say this is the, the basic package. Um, this is going to be your, I'll rename this one to advanced. Um, and let's say this is ultimate. Okay. Now, each one, whichever one you're on is the one that's purple. So let's, we, basic is the one that we started with. And we've set that up already. Let's go over to the advanced. We'll select services. We'll say, if you take the advanced package, you'll get this and this and the assessment and then the cleanup and let's say accounting support. I'm going to add those services. You make sure to set up everything you need to. But what's something that you can do is maybe sweeten the deal. If they're going to take five services as opposed to four, maybe you'll offer a discount on a few of these. You could say, if you take this, it's going to be a 10% discount on this. This one maybe, and you can actually also edit it from here. See the little pencil? I'm going to offer a, uh, a $50 discount on this one. Click save. This one's maybe going to be an optional service, and I'll make it included. You can play around with things, right? So then when, and let's just choose, let's just choose some services here for the ultimate. Go with this and this. You got the cleanup, accounting service. I'm just clicking things to show you as an example. Of course, I would suggest you put a little more thought into it. Ordinarily, okay, we're going to add those services. And again, maybe this one's going to be optional and this one's also optional. Okay, but this one, if you're going to, let's go with this. We're going to edit this one and we'll give you a big discount. If you decide to take this, it's only $250. we are giving you half the price there. Or you can show it as a discount, right? All of these different things you can play around with. So now when your client gets this uh, proposal from you, now we're going to go back to the client preview. It looks totally different. So we've got the, uh, the, the basic message here. Now it's a select a package where before it said your services. So we're going to select the package and they get a breakdown and they can see what am I getting in each package? They, they can click on the little I and all of the details show up over there that they can see they're getting discounts on some things and what it all looks like. When they select a package and they click next, then they get that breakdown the same way they saw before. And they can always go back. They can go back and say, actually, you know what? I think the ultimate package looks good and select that. They can play around with it, decide what to include, what not. All of the information is in there. So just when you see the experience from your client's side. Okay. Now that we've looked at services, we just have one or two more things to look at here. We have payment settings. This is just decide how long you want to take before the money comes to you. If you have a delay, if you want to give your client some time from the invoice billing day to actually take the money from their account, you can give that to them. Otherwise, it's upon receipt of invoice. One of the beautiful features of Anchor is that you can decide that if your client pays for the credit card, they're going to cover the credit card fee. If you want to take that upon yourself, you can say, this is ten. I'm test business. I'm going to pay for it. But more often than not, our anchor users are deciding that their clients will cover credit card fees. Here, if you for any reason did not want your client to include their payment method upon approval, um, you can say that they don't have to include it. Otherwise, as part of the approval process, they need to put in their payment method so that we can guarantee that you get paid. And then down here under the agreement settings are terms and conditions. So you'll go and you can upload your own. You can choose anchors. You can have several within the system and select which one you'd like to use. A wonderful feature that we have here is that um, our agreements are editable. You can make amendments 
So you never really need to send more than one agreement to the same person. But if you do that, you'll end up on in the second session, I'll make sure you know exactly how to do that. But a lot of the things can be edited here. You could change your terms and conditions. You could add new services. You could change prices. All of these things, you make an amendment and your client will need to approve. If you're concerned that your client will not approve and will not come into the system for, to approve, they're maybe technologically challenged. Uh, maybe they're a little bit difficult. Uh, you can add this and we love this feature. It's recommended. Um, you can make sure to include this in your proposal where if your client does not take action, if they don't either uh, accept or reject the uh, change that you've made within seven to 30 days, you decide this amendment will go in into effect. Definitely something useful to pay attention to. I'll also mention that if you ever want to add or update your client's payment method on their behalf, you can do that. Just request account and access and it will allow you to go into your client's account to make those changes. So really briefly, we're going to look at the client preview again. And now we know we have the intro and selected package. We'll choose this. All of the services here are available. They can decide what they would like to include, approve services. Then we have the agreement terms. So your client will, this is something we're going to be releasing shortly. They're going to look at the agreement terms and decide what they're going to do. And then right now that it's a slightly different process, they just have to approve if you're going to have the accountant access or not. And then they're going to, this is just a preview. So you're not going to see the last step here is that they add a payment method and they're going to go in and they're going to have the option between a free ACH or if you select that they're going to cover, they're going to do the credit card. We use Plaid to connect. They'll put it all in. And before everything is done, you will have their payment method as part of the account so that you'll get paid. Okay. Now, please note down here, we have a save. Oh, once we're just quickly, you, you click send and it's sent. Okay. I <laughs> want you to know that. Um, I just want to point out that we have a save as template option. So if you've set this up and this is exactly what you tend to send out pretty often, you can save this as a template. You just name it. So we can call it template test one. Click save. And now you'll notice if we go to your templates page, here is template test one. You can use this template and basically set up as many as you want. And if you have standard things that you tend to offer a bunch of different packages or this set of services and you like to have a certain amount of days for the auto approval, set up some templates, speed things up for yourself the next time you're going to create a template. Okay. And I'll also mention that we have default settings here where instead of having to choose each of these things every time you open up a proposal, you can basically select in advance what you want to be as your standard terms and conditions. If you'd like to have this enabled, the auto approval enabled with 10 days notice, that could be your default. So you just come into the system, you select which things you want as your standard, you click save changes. And the next time that you create a new proposal or even a new template, these things will already be in place. So I definitely recommend coming in to your default settings and making sure that these are set up, get and decide what you want to do as your default, and then you can move forward from there. I'll mention as well, once you send off your proposal, it will go to your, oops, let me just discard the changes. Once you do that, it'll go to your sent folder. You'll get to see all of the proposals that have been sent out. You could see when they were sent and who sent them. And we also have a status, okay? So you can see, for example, this was sent to the client. The client has not even opened it yet. It was only sent. And look, it was on the 26th. You can review that with a little pop-up and it's going to tell you where things stand, when you sent it, when reminder emails went out and where they're stuck, what's, what the next level is. Let's try that again. There we go. So you can see here, for example, the proposal was sent then, an automatic email was sent out and now your client has not even reviewed it. So what might you do? You might send them an automatic reminder right from the system. We'll send them an email. Or you can copy the link to the proposal. This is definitely recommended regardless of how long it's been. Copy a link. This is a unique link to each client's proposal. Send out a personal email and say, hey, I've switched to Anchor. This is your proposal. Click on this link. Go ahead and sign it. Okay? They know you. They trust you. Um, and a lot of times we think they move faster um, when you send them that link. So certainly there's value in you copying the link to the proposal and sending it out. And so we'll give you the breakdown of the different statuses here. And I'll actually point out that here back on the dashboard page, you can also see the status here in the pipeline. 
So here we see there were two that were sent, two that have been reviewed, one that's just waiting for your client to complete payment method. You can click on this bar right here and we'll take you to the page with the two that have been reviewed. We'll always give you that breakdown. And of course, you can take action. You can copy the link from here, send a reminder. You can view your proposal and you can edit your proposal. If you would like to make a change, your client said, you know what? I want to negotiate on the price with you. You can do that. You can edit the proposal and it will withdraw what you've already sent. It'll send out a fresh link. I'll also mention, by the way, when you have that client preview button, it's actually really helpful if you want to review it with your client. You can get on a call with your client, use that client preview button and run through the process with them. They'll see all the steps. You can explain whatever you need, explain your services, use it as a tool for you um, so that it'll help you as well in terms of getting your proposal approved. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. I think we've covered a whole lot. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. 